All right, hello everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the SAR cast. This is, I believe, this is episode six. We are going to be talking about every single Super MRL Tonight episode. Uh, this tier list is created by me, uh, Weezy, and I'm joined by my fellow co hosts, Broads and Popcorn. <laughs> hello, it you a bit long to say that one. Yes, in the- yeah, there's quite a we I already heard say. news that uh, the SAR tonight will be returning in the near future. So why not rank some of the episodes of SAR tonight in one episode of the Sarcast? Cool idea, Pop, or cool idea, Wheezy. And um, mm-hmm. I'm going to already get to the screen where we can see our tier list here, along with a short image of every episode of um, the. I keep wanting to say sarcast, but that's not what it's called. Sar tonight. Jeez. Um, <laughs> do I need to get this on screen for you guys? Hold on. How do I want to do this? Might Man. as well. All right. And here we go. I honestly, Popcorn, you said before that you should have watched some of the older episodes again. I feel the same. I think I, <laughs> like maybe nine months ago, watched all of them in one sitting from start to finish um, by the request of some viewers. But yeah, it has been a while since... Um, I've seen any of these. Is there a wiki actually that I can be looking at? On the wiki, um, does it go over Star Tonight episodes? Let me take a look. Yes, it actually does. All right, if so, that would actually be probably a good place to start for each one to just give a refresher of the sort of storylines or what came along with each one of these episodes. I know that we are not including the quality of the the clips, right? The viewer submission clips? No, no, right, no. Are Those gonna... are separate. Uh, right. Yes, let's judge people. You know, <laughs> I was just saying, the quality of the clips overall, were they banger clips, like once in a lifetime type beat, or like are we seeing it, this on a normal Tuesday afternoon? I, I thought it's that could be it's usually just banger clips, but also a mix of like funny clips as well. Yeah. Okay. Oh, perfect. There's a literally short summary of each episode that we can read side by side with each of the episodes. Wow. Okay. That's actually perfect. Wonderful. That's yeah. huge. That's actually not bad. All right. And then I'll start us off, honestly, with this first episode. So, um, December 12th, 2018, the very first episode, season one, episode one of Star Tonight drops. Here's the summary. The hosts introduce Star Tonight. As the episode ends, the ceiling collapses on the hosts and the program is interrupted by a screen cordially inviting the viewer to join the super animal super resistance. So Yeah, so this so this is like a starter episode on this is where they introduce uh the two newscasters, uh Donk Patrick and Hal Michaels. And this entire episode was really short. Um this is this came out uh, um, around the release of Super M Real. Um, but this also introduced a new faction called the Super Animal Super Resistance, aka the Rebellion. So, yes. uh, aka the good so side. So, very critical to lore, I would say. Yeah. Right? This is just an, this is just an introduction episode. Yeah. So. so while it was short and doesn't really have the baseline of the rest of the episodes, it is valuable to lore. So what do we value that on a tier list? Probably like a C. I would say. Yeah, it, it's a nice flat C. It's a fair introduction, but it's not like anything uh special. Yeah. No. All right. Um, does anyone want to read the second episode? Oh, yep. Weezer, you do it. I can read it. So, on January 14th, 2019, um, this ep- second episode is called Owl Strikes Back. So, in summary, it says the hosts are back. As the hosts are introducing their sponsors, rebelling the members creep around the outside of the studio, and Owl grabs an AK and begins shooting at them, scaring them off. So this yep. episode was just about the rebellions infiltrating the the Star Night Studio, I believe, or Saw stu- stu- Studios. So this is this is Pretty um, much. it does introduce them a little bit more, I would say, of what they are like. Honestly, this this episode makes me actually want to bump up 
this a little bit more and then put that into C because that really is like the basic of all basic episodes, right? At least with yep. this one, we're kind of introduced to what the entire game's lore is around, right? So that feel like it should be a little oh, bit yeah. more respectable on a tier list. What do you oh, think? Yeah, for sure. I, awesome. I think you can just straight up bump it up. But... Yeah, I think I'll bump this up, and that seems like a, an actual good baseline episode. Yeah. Of like, not, that is the nothing crazy is happening, at least with the introduction. You know, you get the spice of, you know, learning the characters' names, the factions, and everything. Yep. Uh, Popcorn, Big do you have the wiki open? Yes, I do. All right, hit that summary for episode three then. All right. <clears throat> the hosts report from a makeshift studio on the giant eagle they are ambushed by the rebellion uh, donk escapes while hal tricks the rebellion members into blowing themselves up with a grenade by jumping off the eagle last second the hosts flee through the saw welcome center but are surrounded and captured by rebellion members at the fountain just by you reading that 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 episode kind of just flooded back to my head that was kind of that was kind of wild it was a really good episode yeah <laughs> Yeah, this is where the rebellion actually took action on the the Cassiers. Yeah, no, it's um, it, it it was a definite step up from the older episodes. The voice acting around this one got a little bit better too. The story yeah. was actually really getting set in motion, and the whole thing of like Hal just tricking them into blowing themselves up is really funny. And also, <laughs> there being a yeah. different location other than the. The actual newsroom you know them being on the yeah. eagle is also a cool taste a little bit of uh lore different angles from something you see in the game so this is probably going to be one of the bigger ones right honestly mm -hmm. i'm trying to look personal the opinion i put it in this it did also introduce the welcome center as well yeah i was going to say is there any other yeah things that were kind of released or teased with this episode i feel like we should probably be thinking about those things as well. uh i'd say well, since it, the episode is called Friends of a Feather Fight Together, uh, this introduced, um, I would say, the eagle ending as well. Yeah. Oh, it, it was all about birds. Yeah, I and say. I'm looking, and it actually also, is in the uh, episode, it talks about not missing the performances of Lady Kaka and Blue Jay Z, and that was the first mention of those two characters. Is that right? Yeah, those are just, those are cameo characters. Yeah. But I just think that's another kind of like legacy piece of uh, content. Yeah. And then, okay, that's the next episode. I don't want to talk about that yet. Yeah, I kinda, <laughs> Pop, Pop, thinking about the rest of the episodes coming down the line though, and how how Ooh. kind of crazy, how much crazier and crazier they get, is that really an S? Like, do you feel like that's gonna hold up as we go down the list? There's one in particular that I'm like etching to put an S, but like I, I, I feel like we could put this in S like for now, but we could just bump it down to like right. A. Uh, we'll just like keep it, it safe. That's like okay. a yeah. very cool episode, especially after the first two. It's a proxy, yes. Yeah, big, big hype up. Um, and then there is Oh wow, okay. The next one on our list actually isn't mentioned, but that makes sense. It's a t uh, teaser that they were now taking clip submissions. So in these first three episodes, was there no clip submissions? Uh, there, there, there was, I believe. Huh, okay, because I see... I think it was just the ones that they found, but then they start doing a submission system. Got yeah, okay, they sense. usually announce it in their Discord. All right, that makes sense. Well, back to me, and I will hit this episode number four, June uh, 21st, 2019. The hosts report from the Rebellion Prison in the Superite Mountain. Held at gunpoint, they condemn the violence of the, the animal royales. Just as Donk is about to apologize for being a collaborator, a delivery mole delivers a mole crate to the house, which contains a minigun. Hal uses the minigun to kill the prison guards, and the hosts escape to the saw forces waiting outside the mountain cave. And I remember that, was this the one that yeah. had that like sick escape scene? Yep. Like they they're running out the of the right side of the mountain and like Raven comes out behind the Raven statue. Is that this one? Yep, it's that yeah. one. They are escorted by Saw's um, forces at the end. Oh, this is where the prison rat comes in because they're talking about the dirty rats and he goes, I'm not a rat. Yep. Oh, this one. Not a rat. This is a, this this introduced... kind of a banger too, though. Oh, no. This actually might this... be harder than I thought. This introduced the Super Mountain as well. Yeah, mm. that's what the update revolved around. 
So this one's kind of tough because I feel like this one's like kind of up there as well. The introduction to the mountain, the introduction to the rat, right? Yep. Another Sardanite character. And then that escape sequence, which An NPC. sequence, which is so funny because that's actually in-game footage of people like acting it out. That's yep. That's really fun. <laughs> I don't know. What do you guys think? Oh, uh, I want to say that. I want to see like S or A for this one. Yeah, no, I feel like I, this I is better than the good. last one because that started incorporating like the in-game skits, but also with the animations. We have two new characters first time on screen with the mole crate and with the rat, right? No, I feel like yep. this actually is. I'm yeah, actually gonna bump that one to the top. You guys think I'm wrong to say that this is the nah, top right nah, now? Nah, nah. Yeah, that one's this this one, quick. this one is a little. I'd say it's a little shorter than the other one, but but still it. It, I'd say it's way better than three, in my honest opinion. Alrighty. And whoever was next, go ahead and hit up episode number five. Yeah, so in this episode, um, the hosts are back in the sauce studio and are now guarded by guard dogs. They introduce their embedded correspondent, uh, Joe Cluck, Joe Cluck. The, the news reporter on the field, who is frightened by all the fighting going on around them. Joe flees from the fighting through Super Animal Farm under the assumption that they had won. John Joe begins the default dance, but gets shot with a sniper from off screen. As the episode ends, Cap 5 throws a lucky cat mine on the host's desk. Dang, this really is getting tough because I remember liking this episode as well, and they introduced two more characters, right? And then, yeah. I don't remember also, this. Also, is... a little, uh, as they a also... side note, yeah, they <laughs> leaked the uh, whole cat mine. Okay, way, that's what I was about early. to say, because yeah. the lucky cat mine, it didn't even. Oh, wait, what? It was the like lucky three years away. It even at that says mine. in trivia, it says the episode was the first appearance of the Lucky Cat Mine. It did not end up in the game until three years later. Whoa, it's that a pretty is insane crazy. League when you think about it. This foreshadowed it. It's throwable. That is crazy. So two new characters in Cat Five and Joe Cluck. Uh, the Lucky Cat Mine three years early. Where do we think this place is? Actually, I think it's, it's either. Oh man. Dude, I, this is a really goofy episode. I still think it's us. It's yeah, really, it's 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 okay it's for them to be episode. certified bangers. Like I'm not gonna lie, it's just okay. Um, I like this even better than that still though because of the introduction of Joe Cluck the goat and that yeah. cat. I didn't even realize the cat mine was three years early in that clip. That is wild. Three years is crazy for like a yeah previous this last is... week. Yeah, this is 2019 as That's well. Absolutely wild. Introducing the super animal farm. All right. Um, dang, this is going to get harder and harder. I kind of didn't think that it there was going to be this many bangers. But as we're reading these summaries, it's like kind of flooding back in my brain and it's starting to come back. Uh, popcorn, that means you have number six, though. Yippee. So this is the, um, I believe, the first Halloween mm -hmm. event. Uh, yeah, okay, so Howl Aween has come up on Super Animal World. Joe Cluck's clone, which this begins the joke of uh, Joe Cluck basically being a whole, uh, there's multiple Joe Clucks out there, and it, this is just the start of a, a whole goofy escapade of it, but it yeah, reports it's a whole gag. from the shooting gallery, but is, is taken as a target and shot. So, thus the end of the first show, Clock Clone. Uh, rebels sneak into the Saw Studios disguised as trick-or-treaters, and then detonate the cat mine placed in the host's desk by Cat5. In the previous episode, the Rebels chase the hosts, who escape into hamster balls with the help of Thomas Lutterson. So this, I believe, starts to introduce the whole concept of the more northern area of the map, because I think this is a bit before they introduced um, they introduced the shooting range in this episode yeah but i i think it was a bit before they introduced like thomas's workshop and all the other stuff in uh yeah tundra i could be wrong though because i was not around for that time i think this was th it'll be in the next episode i believe okay yeah no the, the next episode is the introduction of thomas's workshop okay so it's a prelude to so, it yeah. in that another place. new character hamster balls i remember that chase sequence another in-game chase sequence the lucky cat mine shows up again and explodes right that's what we're on yep. yes 
And so, what do we think here? Gosh, is it just another S or? Not. I, I wouldn't call this one S personally. Okay. Yeah. I think it's like. It's like A. Okay. Uh, yeah, A, A, I feel like. I actually a good would agree spot. with that. I actually agree with it. I think it's, it should probably be the top of A. I'm being very modest with this one, I would say. Yeah, yeah. It, it's like. It's the tippity top of A, but it's not quite S. All right. Yeah. Um, and we're going to skip over another submission teaser and head to the first Christmas episode. Christmas episode Christmas. of Sorry Tonight. And is it my turn again? Yep. Yes. To read? All right, here we go. The hosts finally arrived, arrive at Thomas's workshop and introduce their new friend, Thomas Sledison. A super penguin chick peeks out of a gift box and demands Donk's attention. The hosts check back with Joe's clone, who is at Lake Slippity and is sliding around. The workshop is then filled with the penguin chick's friends as the hosts check back in with Joe a second time. It is revealed that they are surrounded by super penguins who all pull out guns and shoot at them. The uh -huh. penguins in the workshop also pull out guns and reveal themselves to be resistance members. The hosts escape with the help of a rope dropped by Jimmy Talon uh, <laughs> down the workshop's fireplace. And um, let's go ahead and hear Wheezy's bias first. Uh, so honestly, <laughs> this is a very adorable episode. In my opinion, I got so many pings during the during the live chat of this episode, <laughs> saying like, "Oh, the baby penguin chick is me," but it, it's oh it's my not. god, guys, it's Ouija. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, this is probably like one of my best days I've ever had. Uh, just seeing this episode alone, uh, updating the tundra biome. We also got um, the Thomas gun in the game, alongside the Christmas event. I still think this. I think this is honestly S tier as an episode. But just, just, just because of how cute the uh, penguin is. That's it. <laughs> I remember this yeah. being like kind of the first big plot twist. In, yeah, this was a huge plot twist. In, episode. I mean, uh, um, unless you I think like that Cat Five like was normal, which I felt like from the get go they were kind of making Cat Five seem like a little um trader you know so this was like the first big like switch up so yeah popcorn do you think it's s or do you think it's below s uh this this one's hard <laughs> um honestly I, I i feel like you could put this in s but it's like bottom s okay that's all right fair. i would have said hi a so i'll give you bottom of s then that's all right i just uh think when you think about these episodes there's either multiple like uh, huge additions of characters or location. I mean, I guess they there was I mean, though. Was like the real the whole like... and the location of the workshop. I guess it, it really does follow with yeah. of, some of these other bangers. The it also that we're missing is the... an in-game an in-game uh, <laughs> chase scene. Is the it also introduced the Penguin Palace in the game because as they advertised it. All right, 2019 was done for Sar tonight though. And next, we get a special report in March 6th of 2020. Who wants to read that summary? Mm, uh, I will read it. So, yeah. This is a um, personal favorite of mine. <laughs> yeah, so this isn't really uh, a, a full episode. This is just like a mini episode. So this talks about uh, uh, the emus, I believe, and the rebellion. Um, so... Donk reports that there has been unauthorized release of valuable company property. Two Rebellion members are shown to be opening a cage, releasing a giant emu. The Rebellion members then ride the emu and escape. Donk advises anyone who has seen the Rebellion members to report them to the closest Saw Security Forces office, and also advises that if anyone sees anything like the giant emu, not to feed, pet, bludgeon, or especially ride them. So this is just an introduction to the emus, and that's pretty much it. And just letting Saw now, know that hey, there, there's rebels that are causing a ruckus. Yeah. Now, how big was this when this came out? I obviously was nowhere uh, near around. I think you. Were, I, it was. I was a massive personal fan of the video. If I'm being honest, yeah, it was. Like, was this it was like very a big buzz, or like was this a huge freak out moment, or was this kind of just mid at the end of the day? Would I? I'd say it's like down the middle. Cool. Yeah, it's like down I am the middle for me. Very, very biased towards this episode, so I don't feel 
like I can give a proper input, but uh, I I don't know. In truth, it was just kind of a little mini episode showcasing off the emus. They did it in a pretty cool way, but it's not like you don't really get any massive lore besides, hey, look, there's emus in the game. There's the emu ranch. But yeah, that's pretty much that's it. That's about it. I I feel like, in fairness, you can put this at like the top of B tier, but I feel like it shouldn't go any higher than that. The concept of it is cool, but in reality, it's not really much. Yeah. I'd say it's like B as well. All right, it'll go into B, and then it looks like our last stop for season one, correct? Yep, season one, last stop. Yep, would choo -choo. be. What is this one even titled? Oh, Where Are Donk and Howl? March 27th, 2020. Oh, so this was it's just... another mini episode. This was exactly three weeks after the Emu special report. That's interesting. Um, yep. And whose turn is it? I think Pop? Yes, I believe so. Oh, this one has, I think, the longest words of any episode. I had to zoom out hey. my page just to get it all in one. Go for it. A special on vacation episode of SAR, or sorry, SAR tonight. Uh, the hosts Joe Cluck, or rather the super orange chicken version of Joe Cluck, and Cat5 reports from the Saw Studios. They report their top story, which is that Donk and Howl have not been seen basically anywhere since their escape from the rebel gang. Just as Joe Cluck imitating Donk tr tries to introduce the super kill segment, he is killed by a giant pot falling through the ceiling. Rip to the other joke luck. Um, <laughs> He'll he it turns off. into a chicken dinner gravestone. The program shows a number of social media posts showing Donk and Howl literally on vacation, visiting several places across the super animal world. Donk and Howl are shown parachuting from the super eagle into the protection of the Saw security forces, and they go for a ride on a giant emu. Special episode ends with Cat Five taking a bite from Joe Gravestone. So uh, a little, little, little funny concept there about just Joe being eaten. It's always one of my favorite parts of that episode. He's like an Joe's essentially just like an isekai protagonist. Pretty much, except he has no power. Nah, he just he just walks it off walks off and gets cloned but yeah this episode it just i think it was just supposed to introduce the free falling mechanic into the game it's goofy and i yeah. feel like that's about it yeah right, so i would say it's falls for a conclusion to season one like top uh, c for me honestly yeah top c for me as well top c down for it and then it was we skip a down. recap which is okay and then we get to the start of season two, which was how much later? It was, oh wow, a kind of a big time skip here. March 27th is that conclusion episode. And then December 3rd is the uh, release date 2020 for a season two episode. Um, and that is, I think it's back to my turn. The stage is set with a short summary saying, the introduction of Super Animal Super Rebellion and Joe Cluck's kidnapping. Is that right? Is it that simple? Yep. Pretty much. Oh, wait. These are ones where you have to click into it to get a real good look at what the episode is about. Uh, about. Um, a little bit more into that, that plot. Cat5 is cleaning the studios when world forces surround the building. Cautiously greets the security forces, afraid that they're there to investigate him, possibly for planting the Lucky Cat Mine and instead they're there to uh, protect the hosts who are jumping off of jimmy talon's back because don oh donk patrick is concerned mm -hmm. about cat five um and that there's oh yeah that there is a menace on the loose which i think is a quick teaser into one of the main bad guy or good guy i don't know however you want to see it character that we'll see in the rest of the future episodes right which is who the yep. finch yes yep okay, the finch so is that actually was a little episode. that was a little bit more complex than the summary led on um what do we think about that as an introduction back to sar tonight after many many months of it being gone uh this is so, like almost a year i believe as well 
The introduction for the Finch is pretty special to me because I guess this is a little bit of a fun fact. This whole thing started as I believe someone in the SAR community created a rebellion discord server and the main owner of it was a Finch and the way that they kind of went about it was they just put them in the story as a Finch as a little nod to that existing. So it's yeah. kind of cool that it just re they related to a part of the community that exists in the actual lore of the game. Yeah. So that is when the teaser for the Finch happens, right? Pretty much. Okay. Yep. All right. So what do you think this is compared to our list, though? Even with the teaser of the Finch, it's kind of a tame welcome back to start tonight after being gone that many months, though, right? Or do you guys agree with I me or am I wrong? it's around the same spot as the Emu report. Okay. I wouldn't yeah, really that's probably that's where I would put it to put it so. anywhere else. Um, okay, that's actually fine. That's where I would put it. And then somehow, just two weeks later, they drop back to back episodes here, and we get episode two of season two. Go, someone go ahead and read it. Weezer's. Uh, all right, one second. Uh, do it faster. Go. Oh, it doesn't. S I, when well, I there's like nothing didn't. in this episode. Yeah, there, there's <laughs> nothing. So, by the way, hold it's... on, pause real quick. Wiki heads, we just clicked on this episode and it's absolutely empty. Get to the plot. Come on. Yeah, so <laughs> it's we'll it's kill it. all of you. Well, in terms of a short summary, it says while being held for random, Joe Cluck meets a super chick named Peep, which Peep is a girl, by the way, and yes. she basically becomes friends with Joe. Um, trying to Wait, what did you just say? be friendly with him. How do you know that Peep is a girl? Is that is that explained somewhere? It was proven. It's proven. It's proven. The gender of the end of the character is proven. Why are you making a big deal out of this? No, but like, where are you saying that? Like, how did you just randomly say that? What's the well, context? I'm, Tell or, me out here. I'm not. I'm not really saying. I'm not really setting the source too much because I'd have you'd have to like look into the episode, but. Uh, you can I, tell just because of the voice that, yeah, Peep is in fact a girl. Um, but it also shows later down the line that the people in the lore discussion section on the SAR Discord go nuts sometimes whenever they look into things. Huh. I have yep. learned some of the nichest information about this game's lore just from that area. And it, it, it's concerning what some of them write in there, but hey. Lore discussion. You know what? I'm typing it. What gender uh -huh. is Peep from SAR tonight? Is that how I would ask that question? Probably. Yeah. All right, Weezy. Uh, right, but I'm overall, leave that for later. Go ahead, Weezy. Come, but but overall, this episode it's it's supposed to be a reference to uh, the Grinch's story, I believe. So you can you can determine if it's good or not. But um, overall, this this episode was pretty solid um i do i did like the little uh uh story um setting that they went with like it like you were reading a book you know how would you say it stacks up against the other christmas episode though uh i'd say pro i'd say it's a little lower personally like i'd like actually a, rated a bit higher like like low A in my opinion. Oh, okay. You mean A. Way. When you said lower, I thought you meant like C, and I was gonna be like, no, no, I, I, no, actually, no said I, I, I actually I don't, was I don't gonna think say it's A, C. so I'm down to put that in. Yeah, and I feel like all of us agree on A. Okay, that's it's huge, it's yeah. a fun episode. Yeah, it's fun, but, it's but just... like this with the introduction of you know the penguins, the the what's that word called? The Thomas Tundra. Yeah, Thomas is Tundra. Thomas is Tundra. Sledison, um I think that just stacks up a little bit higher, you know? Yep. Yes. Um, Popcorn, your turn, and it is uh, episode three, season three. Yippee. So this is the no such thing as a sure thing. Funny little name there. Uh, so I'm going I'm to read through the very long plot section of this episode, but I'm going to briefly summarize it. Joe Cluck is removed from their prison cell and taken with the rebels as they march across the island sing the rebel theme. This goes on for a while, but it's honestly such a cool like transition segment of them yep. marching to the beat of the song around different areas of the uh of the, like basically the whole map. 
So during this time, Don Patrick, Cal Michaels, and Cat Five prepared the payment for Joe's ransom of ten thousand and eleven saw tickets, which can be referenced in the game to the briefcase that you can have as a gravestone. Uh, Cat Five of which delivers that to the Finch near the Bamboo Resort. During this episode, Don Patrick and Hall Michaels cover what is in Health Juice before revealing what is contained with it, and then the show is conveniently cutting off uh, is conveniently cut off by Peep changing the channel to a Blue Jay Z rap video. Uh, then it goes through the uh, whole Superus kills segment. Another Joe Cluck is there, and it's revealed that there are multiple Joe Clucks just in different areas of the island, and they all start to meet each other and get into a bit of a confused haze. Uh, the final segment of the show is an advertisement for Cackling Carl and Miss McCossum. But the actual ending to the lower part of it is Joe Cluck spots the soft horses storming the beach, and a super hippo acts as an alarm to the revels of the attack, and the episode ends when a skunk bomb is thrown into the room of Joe Cluck and Peep. So off the bat, this episode's just... It's jam-packed. There's a lot to love about it. Yeah. Like, the whole yeah, marching This actually theme. is, like, one of the biggest, like, lore-heavy episodes, just from, like, time-wise, right? Like, the yeah. whole march is kind of, like, drawn out, but it's kind of, like, cool, because it's kind of, like, a cool scene. I remember them hanging out in that house, and then the ending with them getting skunked. Right? Don't they this get, is like, like the the rising action, I believe. Yeah. Was this when they introduced Carl coins as that concept for? I don't remember. Uh, no, that was no that that was in the episode one of season two. Okay. Um, very very cool episode. I think it deserves somewhere in S. I don't know if you guys agree with me. I'd put it. It at really a high is S just one of the goaded episodes. Yeah. I can still remember the little say high the S. little jingles and the the ending. Um, where do we want to put it in S, though? I'm personally Ooh. biased to a really high S. Like, I'd put it at the very top, but... I'd say, like, in between Season 1, Episode 4, and 5. But that's just me, though. I kind of like it it's right here. To you, this man. with the, the rat and... This is, like, the first episode where they really added a bunch of extras characters. Yeah. The first extra chase scene, you know, with the skit in game, says so this one holds like a special place. There's a here bit of at the bias. Of the there. Yeah. Um. All right. And in August, so forward. another nice little time skip here. August 2021, uh, the fourth episode. You can never have too many comes out. I think it is back to me, isn't it? Am I after popcorn or is Weezy? I, th uh, I think it's, it's supposed to be me. Okay, go for it. <laughs> Or, or no, it is Bros. I oh, think. is it? Yeah, it's you read right. the non-existent plot yeah, section. Yeah, once again, another plot section missing. <laughs> but I'll read the short summary. Um, uh, the Saw forces and rebels fight on the beach, and Doctor Dagna releases a horde of many animals across the island. So, this episode is actually quite nuts. If I'm being honest, there's a lot that actually happens and that is probably the briefest explanation of it that you'll ever get. But yeah, no, this, this came alongside the introduction of 1.0. So this was when the game got its like big glow up, the biggest player population. This is the episode that basically everybody saw. Yeah. Uh, as an episode in that regard though, it, doesn't even like have the highest views in the game or sorry in of all the episodes the fight scene on the beach is cool but at the lab lab the whole little like gremlins of the little eyes in the dark it just revealed to be the minis and they're jumping around the laptops bleh, trying to do as much rambunctious thing as they do it's cute that's a good way of going about it but there is the whole segment of Peep and Joe Cluck marching alone throughout the areas of the island, and it's really depressing, but they march over the mini mart, and then they get stormed by a bunch of minis, and they're like, what the hell is this? But yeah, no, they meet the other Joe Clucks in this episode, which... Yep. Nice little nod to the whole showcase of there being other Joe Clucks, and they're like, wait a minute, why is there other Joe Clucks? So they get all confused. So, also, I'm, a, little, a little small note. Um, this is the first episode to actually introduce uh, 
the credits section into Sword oh, of Night. Right, yeah. All the other Sword of Night episodes by far didn't have a credit sequence. They wanted to uh give the credit that they deserve. Interesting. Yep. Um all right. Um where do we think this place is? Yeah, with the Peep and Joe alone section. There's two lab sections. Yeah, the minis, the rest of the beach battle, the conclusion of the beach battle from the uh, episode before. Where do we think this lands? The minis storming the beach is what sells it for me, but I feel like that's the big substance of the episode. The fight's cool, but it's ultimately over way too fast. Yeah. I. It's supposed to be like a little fast montage. Like most wars usually end up really fast, anyways. Yeah, fair enough, but. I like the episode's cool. It just could have been better. Probably like A, if I'll be honest, A or B. Low A for me. Yeah, at least low A. Low A is pretty modest. All right, and we're adding another mini episode, a four point five episode, with the um, Halloween special here. I feel yeah. like this is the one that everyone knows. Um, and so, first question: Was this? Is this what's the word? Walking Dead. No, is this um what's the word that they oh canon? Is this canon or not? Um, I forget actually. I think it is like a little canon event of the island, but the whole stick was that unlike in game where it becomes very extreme and they have to like leave the island, in lore it's just it's dealt with really quickly. Yeah. Honestly, uh, this is this didn't really this didn't really have too much. I'll say it was yeah, just supposed it, to it be a promotion episode for Walking for Dead. Yeah, so we we had um, this is kind of falls under the special report type beat, right? Yeah, uh, yeah obviously that's you right. actually get to see some Star Tonight characters, so it's a little bit more. I, um, I I feel like this is what the emu episode could have been if okay. they put a little bit more into it. So for yeah, that, I'm personally biased to put it at, like, bottom A, but I feel like that might be giving it a bit too much credit. Yeah, I actually mm -hmm. think it should probably just go above the emus, but probably still somewhere in the B line. What do you think, Weezy? Break, yeah, break I, I think that's honestly fair. Which one? Bottom of A or somewhere in the B? Uh, I'd say B. Okay. Yes, yeah, so I actually I, like I, this. Yeah. I just think it's better than this, but still, yeah, it could have it, been... It's a better episode than the emu showcase because the concept of the zombie apocalypse taking over the island is pretty cool but it, yeah you know it's a mini episode so what are you gonna do mm -hmm. three months later uh we get a, another <laughs> christmas this is technically a christmas episode december 13th 2021 episode number five one damn thing after another that's yeah it's the episode that everybody dm'd me to review oh my god and guess who's talking about this one yeah, you uh, go the for busy it. beavers are shown cleaning up the super animal world after the animal royale and preparing for crispermas pete pitches a ride in the little beaver cart under the candy canes and makes it back to the beaver construction hq meanwhile thomas is trying to get his assistant not to eat his gingerbread minigun. The beaver in the cart takes notice to Peep and attempts to call security, but Peep kills them, leaving the scene and takes the place of a beaver in the workshop who is called away. The beaver beside Peep explains that if the beaver do not hit their numbers, they are put into the animal royale. So it's a little uh, nod to the fact that the beavers don't really take part in the battle unless they mess up. And it's which, a little twisted, I'd say. It's kind of okay. It's twisted, but it. so cool. I like loved yeah. this episode so much. How it's kind of like a behind the scenes of the literal game. How they clean up everything and how they prepare for the next round. You know, like oh, I thought yeah, this no. was like one of yeah. the coolest ideas out of any of the Star Tonight episodes. The it's lore of the is really cool when yeah, you actually super the awesome all that they and, do on the island but and i also remember there is a in-game scene like where they're trying to kind of to be sneaky and sneak into this area correct I think. oh yep. yeah no it's like and a little so it has thing. like all of my favorite things like in-game little skits with out of game really interesting topics or like moments and so in my head this is s i just don't know where it would fall what do you guys think though 
Uh, I, I'd say it's S as well. Like this is very well uh, written for an episode. Yeah, I I'd put it in. I'd say above maybe four. One yeah, episode I, four. I, I guess to summarize the rest of what happens in the episode, since I never actually got to the end part of it before yeah. we start talking. Um, the driver of the cart notices that the companion beaver is dead, swears his revenge when he notices Peep's hat. Uh, he visits he visits Thomas, who gives him a gingerbread minigun, only for a beaver to announce that the Animal Royale would begin soon. Thomas and the other beavers retreat underground, while the uh, cart driver chases Peep with his minigun. But runs out of time, Pete retreats into the tent with Donk and Howl, while the driver fails to make it underground in time, and the driver is put into the animal rail with the other super animals, where he's able to kill a raccoon with a shotgun, but in his glee, gets killed with a sniper. So, pretty fitting for a minigun user, if I'm being honest. <laughs> yeah. Can't resist something so tasty. Ooh, look, <laughs> close range bullet. Uh oh, I am die by sniper. All right, where do we think this fit in though? You said above episode four, the 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 top. Yeah, yeah I would say mm. so. I I don't know if I'd give it that much credit. I I like the beach episode I, a bit more than that yeah, one. Yeah, I was but... about to say I don't even think it's about the beach episode in my head. I still like this one more. Um, yeah, yeah. Honestly, that's fair. Um, but I think it probably goes above this, maybe. I'd put it right below the beach episode. Yeah, no, I actually like that. I like that a lot, actually. Yeah, Remember, like every lot. animated show needs a beach episode, and that's no. always the best one. No, I actually really oh, boy. like... I'm not going to lie. I'm like, I paused for a minute to kind of look over our entire list. I like really like how this is turning out right now. Yeah, it, uh, it's a pretty good-looking list. This is looking pretty good right now. Okay, but there's only two episodes left. Let me get back to that screen real quick. And we have another large time jump here approximately what six months yep six months to june 2022 wheezy tell us about a whole a mole lot of trouble prepare to yeah. read the longest plot summary oh ever. boy so this episode just skip through to, whatever's important to you it just so, skim it. <laughs> so to like summarize this um we get to see how the mole the delivery moles around the map how they work and whatnot and we also see this little uh little star nose mole named twinkle if it, it they do have a name so which they were eventually uh put into a, a storage from dogna because i feel like twinkle was not capable of working as a delivery mole he was too and, chunky yeah unfortunately and also uh this this episode was just about uh uh seeing the war between the rebellion and the saw security as well and let's see we also get introduced to dr spotson yep the re rebellion version of dr dogna i would say the cooler dogna and also uh we also run into another joe problem so all of the joes pass out when they meet each other at the Saw Studios. And Cat5 takes them in, keeps them hostage. Uh, for whatever reason. Doesn't he eat one of them? Or he plans to eat one of them? Uh, he, I believe he plans to eat one of them. Yeah. And there's also a, uh, doc, there's also a failed experiment made by Dogna, which she does make the super lizard and that super lizard causes issues for dogna obviously and the lizard is responsible for uh breaking uh twinkle out and letting twinkle roam the surface as a threat twinkle's free so did this come out with um the svr update like with twinkle yes. or I, was twinkle I believe it, was, so. it was one Actually, update yeah. after because SVR yeah. came out on 1.4 yes. the mole update came out on 1.5 oh yeah this is like an update okay interesting yeah uh, later all right so with all that knowledge where do we think it's placed second to last episode so the episode's really cool but because it introduces twinkle i gotta put it in d <laughs> you don't like twinkle I hate them all so much, man. Why is this? Yeah, I, I have he's nothing just, against the episode. I just he's hate just the whole mechanic of SVR. It. It's so bad. 
Um, oh god, the episode's episode, great. Like not I <laughs> even in my head, not a lot of this uh, episode sticks out to me in my memory. You know, like a lot of these other episodes have. So the point um, of the episode was that a lot of people were taking Saw's side as they were saying, "Oh, but they've done the least bad compared to the rebels." So they were no. just like, "All right, well, let's." Uh, yeah, the, Saw does show their true colors eventually. Yeah, so. especially in this episode, because Sagan's like, oh, don't worry, Twinkle, I got the perfect thing for you, and then they just chain them up in a vault. Yeah. Huh. So, where do we think this fits, though? As a lore perspective, it is kind of cool, the whole thing of, like, it shows a bit of Saw's true colors. But in terms see how the of just, work. Yeah, yeah. So no, yeah, it, it is a and, nice behind the scene thing. And the sort of like creation of the twinkle nose. The mole segment was really fun, but besides that, the episode was kind of mid. I uh, I, I would out. honestly be comfortable putting this in like the top of C. Gosh, but is it I feel like there is way more substance than the the email for yeah. it, right? Like Yeah, you know what, D. I actually Honestly, yeah. This had way more. I, I yeah, kind of so. feel like putting it. I'd say top of B. Like I'll be here, modest. Yeah, that's where I was thinking. But um, is it better than the very first episode ever with the introductions and everything? I would definitely say it's a bit better than the okay introduction of the whole like series. Yep. It, it's a good representation of like a middle okay, ground. Okay. See, I think it, this it, is better. I think this but... is better. I think this is better, and I think these are worse. So like, I think we're in a good spot here. If I can say these are better and these are worse, I think we. We're pretty much on spot oh. right now. But, I'm a bit uh, biased with many episodes. Last episode. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, last episode, September 2022, uh, which is crazy for me to think about because I started playing January 2023, which means since I started playing one year and seven months ago, I have never had an episode of SAR Tonight release while I've been playing. I that mean, we technically, had a, uh, we, we technically had the leak for season three with... Um, John Marooney or whatever his name. Yeah, John Muir. <laughs> Interesting. But um, last episode released, season two. Uh, what do we think? Or Ooh. go ahead and read the summary first. All right. Uh, so this is the last episode. It uh, follows up with Peep and Joe Cluck. It this starts was a lot. A, it, it starts with a montage of Peep sharing like a lot of time with Joe. Um, fishing in the swamp, traveling together throughout the island, and taking a mini chicken dropped by a slow food shipment as a little pet, which I forget. Mini chickens were introduced, I think, back in 1.4, and I guess this is something that we. No, I think. No, this. No, I think was it was. This introduced. Introduced to it? Yes, this was season five. All right, Maybe. fair enough then. But yeah, no, the mini chicken was something that people have been wanting for such a long time. It's really cursed when you actually think about the design of it, but it's cute. So they like it. Uh, they take a selfie, they return to their camp to eat marshmallows, and when this montage ends, the music becomes a bit more grimmer. Instead of saying front of the flock, sorry, front of the feather flock together, they say front of the feather die together. The stream turns into a nightmare, peeps trauma. He gets separate, he bleh. He starts to get separated from the Joe Clux, which scares her enough into walking... I cannot read. Into waking up and feeling immense frustration due to the being separated from the friends that she cares a lot for. When the actual episode of Super Animal Royale tonight starts, it's revealed that there's new items in the saw shop, along with the reveal of the Super Peacocks. So it had the little Mikasa, like the little song for the emus and whatnot. Yep. And it also introduces the dart fly, which Peep uses to infiltrate the studio. And it was a nice way of showing off how it works. Yeah. Uh, I, I guess balance aside for that one. Um, but during, during the episode, it's revealed that the dot that used to be at the Welcome Center vanished. And I guess for those of you who don't know, if you go down to the very, very bottom left of the map where the little docks are at the entry yeah, area the welcome, center. the welcome Center, there used to be a little dot to the right of the rails in the ocean for no reason. 
and everybody was yeah. basically worshiping it. And at one point, they just removed it and they put it as a little. It was a bug, the news. I believe. Yeah, no, it was a bug, but people just treated it like it's our messiah. <laughs> Yeah, that's canon. So they they removed it, and there was a little segment about um, a bunch of people, and I think it was AA members that got invited to do it because I do know that Slava yeah, that was, was part of it. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, they were basically pointing at the dot, and it was a little. It, it was a nice little showcase, of being like, "Where'd it go? Where'd it go?" <laughs> but yeah, um, so the rest of it. This was an uh, emotional experience, I'd say. Oh yeah, no, this episode hurt. Uh, Peep sneaks into the studio that the Jill Clucks are held captive and to try and rescue them, only to be intercepted by Cat 5, causing them to get into a duel which makes the Jill Clucks hold on to each other and watch in fear. While fighting, Cat 5 asks Peep what her intentions are with the Joes and if the Finch knows what she's trying to do. The fight moves into the stage area, interrupting the conclusion of Super Animal Royale tonight lion segment and when pete parries cat 5 and attempts to deliver a final blow cat 5 suddenly pulls out a magnum and shoots peep causing her to die and turn to a box of chicken nuggets peep's last word to the joe Clux was sorry that hurt to watch um yeah it was, and then it just it immediately really goes into the horrible. blooper scooper section <laughs> So, yeah, you, after the blooper scooper section, you see all the Joe Clucks mourning uh, the death of Peep. Dr. Spotson, however, sees the fight on YouTube and makes a clone of Peep with DNA that gets launched to the surface. When the scene returns to the Joe Cluck, a pair of zombie Joes come across the camp. The Joes don't know any better and try to be friendly with them, but this leads to one of the zombie Joes exploding, which causes the super orange chicken of the two Joes to get killed off and making the default Joe Cluck run away, abandoning the mini chicken at the camp. Once Joe stops the pick support to catch their breath, they stumble into the Peep clone, who nearly shoots them, but they can't bring themselves to do it, which shows that the Peep clone, even if it is a clone with different memories, still has enough awareness to not do that to Joe. Um, when the clone lets Peep leave, she gives him a can of health juice, which causes Joe to tear up, since it was a kind gesture of the original Peep that died. Uh, during the post credit scene, Hal Michaels apologizes to Cat5 for being so hard on them. During this moment, between the Rebels and the Finch, they show up at the back door of the studio, and the Finch says hello, and then the little end credits have Joe Cluck being seen wearing a fake mustache and a trench coat, at the front of a tourist boat, assuming that he's finally escaping to live with the humans. Yeah. Uh, so, little little thing to note: small issue with the whole like human thing is that like it's still kind of ongoing about what even is going on with the humans. So, it's not direct. I believe that Joe's just going to the humans, but. He's yeah, just, it's a little he just odd. doesn't want to be in the island. But, but this is a cliffhanger episode, so yes. this is how it this is how season two ended. It is long, it's complex, and it was honestly had, very sad. Yeah, this was a huge emotional impact for me. I still think it's S. I yeah, no, I'd just right away S. Like like top of S, I'd say. Basically for me. Cause this like the animation was amazing. The the story was amazing. I actually loved the little uh, dream sequence that she had as well, which turned out to be a nightmare. So, yeah, a great conclusion to start tonight. Yeah, you know, we have season three to look at. Yep. And uh, yeah, we will see what happens with the season three, which has been promised to come back. Um, one more thing. Oh, do we want to talk about the teaser for that character that we would be that we were told that uh, we would be seeing? Does anyone know any uh, about that character? Do we want we to could talk it? about John Murray. Yeah, someone just want to talk about that little teaser and what it could mean for lore in the future? I gotta go get it. What? Where is it? There it is. So, supernaturalist John Murr, and believe the episode was to showcase off it was mainly to showcase off the rhinos um yep. but the costume of john murr is really cool and 
you know, I've been wanting it in the game for such a long time, but it is just a nice little teaser showcasing us saying, hey, yeah, no, uh, season three is coming out soon. Don't worry about it. We have it planned. And it's in a nice locale area for the pyramid. So there's not really much lore wise for this episode. It's just no. an introduction to rhinos and John Murr. Yeah. So John yeah, Murr, another character. Coming. Another character that's part of the um, Super Animal tonight. Um, here is our list, our full list. Uh, no, it's really solid. Yeah, Weezy, yeah. where do you have this? What did I do? <laughs> Why did the list turn into like this? I don't know. It was just like the list. Yo, just... it condensed. Let's go. Uh -oh. Yeah. Why did Why did it condense? Oh, there. oh, what? There you uh, go. Uh, Every time I press the save button, it like uncondenses and then it recondenses. Whatever. A tier list is a tier list. Yep. Um, real quick, Weezy, the, where can people, where can people find this tier list to be able to take it themselves and make, make their own opinions? You have this anywhere? Um, it's in the description. It should be in the description down below. Wow. If you want to, yes, yeah, so I'll put it in the description. That works. <laughs> if, All right, description if you, on your own. If you if, if you want to rank th these episodes on your own. Time. Yep. If you want to rank your own, start tonight episodes. And one more thing. Does anyone want to talk about the breaking news? One of the big changes coming to season 11 from one of the most uh, yeah. hated items in the game. You know what? So, I'm going to pull this up on yeah, Twitter while you're talking about it. Uh, get the video. So long story short, Pixile, whatever, they decided to basically entirely... I, I, I guess it's not a rework, it's more like a mass buff of the zipline. So as you can it's see, like a, it's nice you can now change. go on it instantly, and when you hold it out, you literally just get a 15% zoom out. Uh, so off the gate, I just think that the 15% zoom is insane. Um, besides that though, I feel like the fact that you can immediately go on the zipline is quite nice. Yeah. I. I don't there is know also if a speed it's... boost whenever you keep chaining ziplines. Yes, that is true. I forgot to mention that that if you do keep going on zipline after zipline, you go faster and faster and faster. I do believe it should be multiplied by ninja boots because I don't see why not. But um, yeah. I think that as a concept, hopefully this means that the zipline of you getting on it immediately will be faster than if you were to actually jump roll to that location. Because that would mean that you have a burst movement option, which that combined with the 15% uh, zoom out just for holding it is quite nice. Because that means that you can have zoom with whatever weapon you want. You can get information without movement speed uh, penalty. Or at least not that big of a movement speed penalty. This will also help aggressive players in a way if um, you're trying to chase someone down and you're and they can't you can't exactly get to that spot so you need a zip line to do it yeah now, now you can just instantly get on a zip line while you chase them i i'm i'm excited for it i want to see what this thing's capable of i doubt it'll be i don't i doubt it'll, it'll surpass like the other throwables but it's a good change at least yeah it, it makes it usable <laughs> it's at least usable now That's all we now. need is a, uh, a tweet about what they're doing to the juicer and everything's going to be a okay. <laughs> well, while you say that, hold on, let me cook. Oh, no. Right before we finish this, view quotes. Michael, <laughs> big day for zip enthusiasts coming into our next patch. Let's check out the comments. Now drop the juicer rework hey. on Twitter early. <laughs> <laughs> With the we did it, everybody. Let's We've achieved go. comedy. We had the same brain cell popcorn. Yeah. Yes. I, I was thinking about doing it, but I don't use Twitter. So. Yes. There we go. 50% of the awful items. Well. 50 of the awful items have been addressed. Um, it's a good it, start. I, okay, I feel like Bandolier could also use something, but I, I think Bandolier can go without a change. Um, like, yeah. if we are getting other things. Uh, but yeah, that is our we'll season 11 breaking news update. Three buffs to the zipline that actually make it Breaking useful. news. 
Zipline S tier, comma. We will see. We will see. <laughs> Only time will tell. Thank you guys so much for joining us for episode six of the Sarcast, going over mostly Sar tonight. And I'm very excited to see what ha will happen with Sar tonight once we get into our regularly spread. Oh, I can't say yep. that word. Regular, regular scheduled programs. Yes, when we go back to our normal programming. Um, Be sure to tune into the next star tonight where you can see Broads throwing it back as the super skills clip. <laughs> that is crazy. <laughs> um, honestly, it might be time that we talk about a big one next episode. We might be talking about the ranked subject unless um, season 11 stuff yep. comes out. So we will see you guys next time, surely with a guest for that ranked conversation. Uh, we appreciate you guys for watching, and uh, we will see you next time. See you guys. Bye. <laughs>